The Hazard Mitigation Assistance Division of the Federal Emergency Management Agency is pleased to present the Safeguarding Tomorrow Revolving Loan Fund Program webinar. This webinar covers the period of performance activities and post period of performance maintenance. Throughout this presentation, you will learn about performance reporting requirements for the Safeguarding Tomorrow Revolving Loan Fund Program or Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF for short. This presentation will cover the basics of the Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF program, the capitalization grants period of performance, performance reporting requirements, performance measures and targets, and the timeline for submission. First, we will provide the Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF Program Overview. STORM Act authorizes FEMA to provide capitalization grants to eligible entities to administer hazard mitigation revolving loan funds through their respective emergency management agency. Funding will be issued to entities at the time of grant award and upon establishment of the entity loan fund. FEMA will not retain the funds until loans are ready to be issued, and entities will be responsible for dispersing funds as loans in alignment with their submitted intended use plan. After receiving a capitalization grant, entities will manage their own revolving loan fund, including processes for who receives loans and strategies to award future loans as funds revolve. As part of the award agreement, FEMA will monitor the use of funding through reporting mechanisms and audits. This presentation will focus on providing an overview of program performance reporting and performance measurement. Here, we will discuss the capitalization grant period of performance. The period of performance for the capitalization grant is 24 months from the date of award, unless otherwise approved by FEMA. Within this time, the entity must administer the revolving loan fund, execute the intended use plan, and utilize the full federal and non-federal share of funding made available to issue loans. As part of the process for issuing loans, Entities must also ensure that projects requiring environmental and historic preservation review are submitted to FEMA prior to the loan being issued. FEMA will not set the period of performance for individual projects being funded through loans. The period of performance for loans and individual projects is established in the loan agreement between the entity loan fund and the loan recipient. For these loans, Hazard mitigation projects funded by the loans do not need to be completed within the grant period of performance. Also, loans do not need to be fully repaid during the period of performance. They will be repaid in accordance with the entity's intended use plan and loan agreement. Reporting requirements for this program evolve over the life cycle of the grant award. Reporting requirements pre-award include the intended use plan and project proposal lists, which are submitted within the entity's capitalization grant application. These items provide baseline information to FEMA and local governments about the entity's plan for administering the program and information on the projects the entity is interested in funding. The initial intended use plan sets several of the entity's performance measure targets against which performance will be evaluated throughout the life cycle of the program. During the period of performance, there are several ongoing reporting requirements for monitoring program performance and compliance. Quarterly progress reports and federal financial reports provide quarterly updates on the program status. Environmental and historic preservation checklists provide project-specific information to FEMA for EHP review on an as-needed basis. Annual audits provide the financial performance of the entity loan fund. Biannual audits provide information on the financial and programmatic performance of the entity loan fund. However, biannual audits may not occur within the period of performance 
depending on when the entity loan fund begins receiving loan repayments. Finally, the intended use plan and project proposal list updates are required to be submitted annually. Lastly, after the period of performance, there are multiple ongoing reporting requirements. The biannual audit and the annual intended use plan and project proposal list updates. These are required for as long as the revolving loan fund is operating. Since the funding retains programmatic identity after it revolves, this means that the fund still must comply with programmatic reporting requirements. With the broad range of eligible project types, some entities will want to award loans to projects that may require an environmental and historic preservation review. For projects that require this, the entity must submit an EHP checklist and other information to FEMA to complete the EHP review prior to the release of loan funds. Entities are encouraged to submit the required EHP checklist for these projects as early in the period of performance as possible to ensure the associated loan can be issued within the period of performance. Not all project types require the submission of an EHP checklist to FEMA for the EHP review. The following project types do not require an EHP checklist. Hazard mitigation planning, zoning and land use planning, and building code adoption and enforcement. FEMA will also not require an EHP checklist for loans which will be used as a non-federal cost match for another hazard mitigation assistance grant application. In this situation, FEMA will complete the EHP review following the procedures of the applicable hazard mitigation assistance grant program. FEMA will monitor the administration of entity loan funds during the period of performance per the reporting requirements described in the Notice of Funding Opportunity and will continue to monitor administration of entity loan funds after the capitalization grant closeout through biennial audits and post-closeout reports. To help entities understand how to prepare for this requirement, we will review the various forms FEMA will be utilizing for this program. To ensure that entities comply with statutory and program policy requirements, FEMA has incorporated verification data points to be collected through the reporting requirements. Some data capturing statutory requirements are fulfilled through the application materials. For example, verifying that the entity has a FEMA approved hazard mitigation plan. Other verification data will be collected during the performance reporting process. For example, FEMA will verify interest rates do not exceed 1% or that mitigation planning efforts do not exceed 10% of the capitalization grant in the quarterly progress reports. Additionally, FEMA will collect, aggregate, and analyze data throughout the application and reporting processes to develop insights to improve program implementation. Insights will serve to communicate the successes of the program, opportunities for improvement, and general information that can inform updates to program processes guidance and policy. FEMA will monitor compliance and the use of funding through several reporting mechanisms and audits. Some of these requirements, such as the federal financial reports and the annual audit, are required for compliance with federal government regulations. Other requirements, such as the biennial audit and the intended use plan and project proposal list submission, are programmatic requirements established in the program's authorizing statute. The publication of information, for instance, is a statutory requirement that requires an entity to publish information about all projects receiving funding. The statutory requirement creates flexibility in the frequency and the location of the publication of information requirement. The objective of the publication of information reporting process is to provide the public with knowledge of funded project activities. The annual intended use plan and project proposal list submissions will also be required, regardless of whether the grant recipient submits additional grant applications in the following years. FEMA uses the payment and reporting system for financial reporting 
which includes the annual submission of the SF-425 document. However, all other reporting requirements and attachments will be submitted in non-disaster grants. Revolving loan fund programs are designed to operate for many years beyond the period of performance of the capitalization grant and require long-term resource requirements and reporting. Therefore, performance monitoring will be required beyond the period of performance. This will be achieved through a post-closeout reporting requirement. This requirement will be established in the grant's closeout agreement and will focus on statutory requirements and entity loan fund performance. The content of the post-closeout report will align with areas of evaluation for measuring the performance of the entity loan fund and FEMA will continue to work with participating entities to establish measures that best suit grant program requirements as well as the long-term health of entity loan funds. Note that the Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF program does not require a specific process for notifying FEMA on project closeout for projects receiving loans. However, performance reporting requirements will include information on details of completed projects, including end date, outcomes, and loan repayment information. The Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF program will review submitted performance reporting to evaluate various aspects of program effectiveness. These performance measures will help the program evaluate the success of both the grant program and an individual entity loan funds. To ensure entities are meeting program requirements and priorities as they administer their revolving loan funds, FEMA has established three areas for evaluating the performance of entity loan funds. First, entity loan fund administration, then equitable distribution of financing, and finally, effective project implementation. Within each area of evaluation, performance measures will assess whether the entity loan fund and projects align with the program objectives. The program has created quantitative and qualitative performance measures and will review them against established targets. Some of the targets are set by FEMA, but some of the targets will be set by individual entities in their intended use plan. In the area of entity loan fund administration, Performance measures will support evaluation of the following goals. Goal one, efficiently distribute funding from the entity loan fund to local governments and or recipients. Goal two, provide sufficient administrative resources and capacity. Goal three, create sustainable funding levels for consistent long-term program success. Management of a revolving loan fund involves strategic planning, monitoring, and control of the fund's financial resources to ensure its sustainability and effectiveness in providing loans to local governments. FEMA will monitor how each entity executes, disperses, and monitors loans. Additionally, FEMA will review how the entity is administering their program in alignment with their intended use plan such as how the program is staffed. This includes if the entity delegates the financial administration or if the emergency management agency has the qualified staff for both financial and programmatic management to meet the objectives of the program. In the area of equitable distribution of financing, the Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF program aims to measure program equity through quantitative and qualitative performance measures that align with the following goals. Goal one, direct funding to disadvantaged communities and or low income geographic areas. Goal two, direct project benefits to disadvantaged communities and or low income geographic areas. The revolving loan funds are intended to reach recipients most in need of financial assistance, including those living in disadvantaged communities or low income geographic areas. 
A goal of the program is that 40% of the overall benefits generated by the entity loan funds flow to disadvantaged communities. Entities are asked to describe how they will address these considerations in their intended use plan. Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF program has aligned equity targets with FEMA's agency-wide equity initiatives, as well as program-specific definitions provided within the program's authorizing statute. For the first round of funding under this program associated with the NOFO, published in December 2022, disadvantaged communities may be defined using either the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Social Vulnerability Index or the Council on Environmental Quality's Climate and Economic Justice Screening Tool. For future rounds of funding, disadvantaged communities should be defined using Climate and Economic Justice Screening Tool. If applicants are interested in using different tool to supplement their identification of disadvantaged communities, please contact the program inbox to discuss the applicability of the tool to the program. The statute also allows for longer loan repayment timelines for low income geographic areas, which are also included in the equity performance measures. Low income geographic areas are defined by these criteria. Either the area has a per capita income of 80% or less of the national average, or the area has an unemployment rate that is for the most recent 24 month period for which data is available, at least 1% greater than the national average unemployment rate. In the area of project implementation, performance measures will assess if projects funded are meeting the following goal. Goal one projects reduce hazard risk and or increase resilience. Entities will be asked to submit a qualitative narrative description of how selected projects decrease communities risk to hazards or increase communities resilience in alignment with their submitted intended use plan. FEMA has determined that a narrative format is best suited for this performance measure to allow entities maximum flexibility in communicating how their program and administration and objectives meet this goal. To help entities understand the alignment and overlap of these reporting requirements, we have developed an example timeline of how these requirements might play out. Entities are required to submit regular performance reports at frequencies that include quarterly, annually, and biennially. General timelines for submissions of these documents is currently defined by federal regulations in the program statute. Future awards and funds drawdown may be withheld if these reports are delinquent. FEMA will continue to work with entities through program implementation to streamline these reporting requirements such as developing a coordinated schedule for annual and biennial submissions. We developed two timelines to help visualize the timing of the performance reporting requirements. The first timeline displays reporting requirements during the period of performance. This timeline is an example and aims to simplify the process by showing awards occurring at the beginning of the fiscal year. To begin, the period of performance begins when the grant is awarded to the entity displayed here at year one. The period of performance ends 24 months after the award shown here as year three. The quarterly progress reports and the SF-425 submission are required throughout the period of performance, denoted by the bracket spanning the two years. The frequency of submission for these requirements is quarterly. After the first year, entities are required to submit an annual audit with the required annual update to the intended use plan and project proposal list, here displayed at year two. The publication of information requirement is displayed in year two 
within the third quarter. However, this is illustrative of when an entity can fulfill this requirement because the program gives entities flexibility on the frequency and timing of fulfilling this requirement. Finally, at the end of year two, the entity must fulfill the second iteration of the annual audit and the annual update to the intended use plan and project proposal list displayed at year three. At this time, the period of performance ends and the post period of performance reporting begins. In this post period of performance reporting timeline, we display six years to illustrate the timing for requirements. Reporting post period of performance will likely continue beyond year seven. In the timeline, we denote the first loan repayment occurring during year three. This repayment triggers the biennial audit requirement submission due date. The biennial audit is due the last day of the second fiscal year after the fiscal year in which the entity begins receiving payments from loan recipients. So in this example timeline, since the first loan repayment occurs in year three, the due date for the biennial audit is in year five at the end of Q3, which is September 30th. Next, we want to highlight the post closeout reports. We are displaying the post closeout reports as an annual submission in this example timeline. However, the frequency for submission of this reporting requirement will be detailed in the closeout agreement and may be at a quarterly or biannual submission frequency. Finally, given that the publication of information frequency requirement is at the discretion of the entity, this example timeline shows an update to the publication of information to a biennial frequency. Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF program is being implemented through an iterative approach, meaning that FEMA intends to work cooperatively alongside entities to address challenges and understand the unique needs that entities will have. FEMA continues to engage stakeholders and incorporate best practices learned from participants to inform future funding opportunities and ensure long-term viability and success of the program at all levels. Based on entity requests and input FEMA receives, FEMA will release technical assistance materials and publish best practices on a regular basis to shape the program framework for future funding cycles. FEMA will provide technical assistance to support entities to prepare for the grant application process, as well as with performance reporting throughout the life cycle of the program. The Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF website on FEMA.gov will be the primary resource for program updates and information. Program support materials, fact sheets, webinars, on-demand videos, and registration for office hours will all be available on the website. Additionally, comments and questions may also be submitted by email to the Safeguarding Tomorrow RLF email inbox at fema-stormrlf at fema.dhs.gov. We encourage anyone with specific questions about the program or applying to reach out to the inbox with their questions, especially to address entity-specific scenarios related to implementing a revolving loan fund. Technical assistance can be leveraged to support the development of application materials, including an entity's intended use plan and project proposal list. Thank you. This concludes the webinar.